Proof is in the pudding right here at the Sportsman Show in Eugene, Oregon. We saw the banjo middle do just like it did 20 years ago when we used to see it on TV. So welcome back. <laughs> I'm a neighbor of Banjo Minnow, right next door. Fishing tanks right across from the booth. And I uh, have seen a couple of other presenters today in between people at our table. And uh, the folks here at Banjo Minnow get up there and they're demonstrating there for the hour that they had initially. And uh, they were able to catch a bass and bring it up and release it. And the crowd enjoyed the heck out of that. And then sometime later, I happened to glance up and saw an interruption on the surface. And I'll be darned if they haven't caught a nice big rainbow, one of the big ones that they have in the tank. So I'll just take a peek for you. And it's the only, only lower company I've seen catch one so far at the show. So that's the green pumpkin, small size, small hook. Only uh, trout caught all day on the tank. Me and my son were just walking around and we came across the banjo minnow. As a kid, I used to see these infomercials all the time. You know, it, it brings it back to my childhood and with fishing, growing up fishing, it really sets me back to there and knowing that we can get them now, it's just, it's great. 23 years ago, we sold 2 million kits. It was the number one fishing lure in the world. And today, there's so much innovation in, in new plastics and all kinds of technology that it's a more durable, um, am I stuck? Oh, it's the fish? <laughs> that's, that's a good problem, I guess. The Banjo Minnow, the company, what we're really all about is making fishing fun. We don't want people to have to have all this skill to try to catch fish. That's why this lure is designed the way it is, is because it has that random spastic action that fish react to. And so anybody, any age, any level of experience or non-experience, all you have to do is just reel in, chatter it, make it go wild, and you're gonna get strikes. I say live action, man. You, you throw that out there and it's swimming. Even with just the weight of the hook, when it starts floating downward, it's swimming. And I just love it. I love it to death. So you can take somebody out there that's never fished before in their life, put a banjo minnow on, and they're going to be hooked for life because they're they're going to catch fish. I will let it die and go down to the bottom without the drop shot. So I'm gonna let it go, die, go down all the way to the bottom, and then I'm gonna do this little tap, tap. Bring it, tap, tap. Let it die, tap, tap. Usually, when it dies is when the bite happens. And that's because that minnow is at its you know, most vulnerable position. When you're a bass fisherman, you're always looking, what's this thing that's gonna mimic small fish in the water? So I picked up on banjos real fast. Yeah. Well then, you know, we started experimenting with it over at Klamath Lake, and we found out the Williamson River strain rainbows in Klamath Lake would hammer these banjo minnows. So it's like, oh, this is our secret arsenal for these big trout yeah. over in Klamath. But by far for bass, you know, you can vertically present them, you could swim them and present them, you could do flutters, you could do a lot of, you could do a lot of things with a banjo. So it was a really great universal lure. It's got a great lifelike quality. Yep. The way the way the tail section is designed, you get that flutter. Mm -hmm. Now when you're fishing it on a vertical presentation, jigging it, mm -hmm. this thing is going to swing and twist, and it far more mimics a natural movement of a small fish in the water right. and you pick up on that real quick yeah. well we're watching how the fish are orienting to it and when it got into that vertical presentation not only were the trout in the car in the tank hitting it then the bass started coming after it then the sunfish even started coming <laughs> after it so do i want to go and spend 80 90 dollars on a crankbait or do i want to use a tool that probably has more versatility to it I'm not gonna say this is gonna be maybe the magic bullet every time, but it's far more gonna be versatile 
and useful in a broader range of conditions than a lot of other baits are going to have just because of its versatility and how it moves and how you can present right. it in the water.